This video will deal with the stage gate model. Now, this is a model that helps us uh, judge whether a project should be entered into or should be completed. When a business thinks of a, a project, an innovative project, it may then set about looking at the various steps that has to be undertaken in order for the, the project to be successfully delivered at the end. So we start with an idea and then it needs to be operationalized. It needs to be put into practice. And there are various steps, perhaps various departments within the company have to be consulted, the marketing personnel have to be consulted. Uh, there are different inputs that need to be checked and ticked off before the project can continue and certainly before it gets to the final stage. After all, the business doesn't want to waste time or spend resources on projects that uh, are clearly not right for the business. They are not going to be commercially successful or there are major obstacles. So there has to be some sort of filtering mechanism to look carefully at all of the the various stages before a project uh, gets to the final phase and is implemented. And the stage gate model is, is useful for this. Uh, it looks at the various stages that a project must go through and it looks at the gates, the, the specific obstacles that the project confronts at that stage and looks at ways of addressing those problems and attempting to fix them. Let's see how it works and go through the slides. Um, first of all, cost-saving technological advances and competitive pressure puts pressure on organizations to innovate. In other words, to produce products that are acceptable to the, to the customers. It's pointless attempting to innovate if the customers don't want the project. They, they don't want the product. Uh, they don't want to see it completed. Uh, so all the time, right from, from inception to the end, the commercial value of the project must be borne in mind. Businesses do not innovate just for the fun of it. The chances are they innovate in order to gain bigger market share or to cut costs within the business itself. So what they're going to do is to look at the commercial potential of projects and try to assess the obstacles and overcome the obstacles and try to deliver a project that is wanted by the customer, so it will be a success in the marketplace, or alternatively, will cut the costs within the business for the existing product range. But cost-saving technological advances and competitive pressure is what really drives this. <clears throat> it's the case that uh, companies, generally speaking, have competitors. The competitors may not be down the road. The competitors may be in different countries. But they have got competitors. Chances are... And the competitors are looking for ways of outcompeting each other. So it's imperative that each company will engage in some sort of innovative thinking, uh, innovative process in order to try and get an advantage over its competitors. The stage gate model is a methodical view of the steps to be taken for successful innovation. And this is what's useful about this particular model. It sets out the various steps. It attempts to anticipate all of the issues. It sets them out as, as stages, different stages in the development of the project. And then looks at the issues associated with each stage. So that once it's been addressed, it can move to the next stage until it finally moves to completion. The model yields insights into the likely success of new products. So 
all the way through, there is a critical eye being cast on the project. Management have to be not cynical, but perhaps critical of the whole process, trying to improve it, trying to uh, change it around so that it becomes uh, better, stronger, and therefore more likely to succeed, specifically in the context of the competitive pressures that the organization will face from the wider market, but also perhaps the resistance it may face from the, the customers who don't necessarily want a change in the product, or at least they don't imagine any need for a change in the product. Sometimes customers are happy with the existing product. It's only when the new product has been delivered and they see the advantages of it will they be won over. Now the purpose of the stage gate model, well, it helps organizations to bring um, or to, to develop uh, products and bring the products to market. So it helps organizations. It, it's a very logical and sequential view of the development of the project, starting with, well, starting with nothing, starting with an idea and moving all the way to the final part, which is the finished product, which goes on the market. So it's, it's very sequential, it's very logical, it's, it's set out. And it's very similar to using um, a Gantt chart where different parts can be programmed. In that case, uh, that's detailed planning. In this one, it's looking at the feasibility of each part. It's looking at, can this be done? Is it too expensive? What are the obstacles? Uh, what are the downsides associated with it? Are the downsides significant or are they so significant that the whole project should be abandoned. So it enables management to walk away if they think the problems are too big. So to start the project and then they suddenly realize <clears throat> this is much more complicated than we anticipated, maybe we should just cut it and look for something else. It gives the organization um, the, uh, the, an insight into the likelihood of success of the product. One, once it's set out in a schema, and, and we'll see later on in the slides how, how this is done, but once it's set out, management can see where the product is going, where this new innovation is going, but they can also see all the downsides, as I said earlier, they can see the problems, uh, they can start they can start to fix the problems they can address the problems and a lot of it is posing the proverbial what if questions what if customers want something else what if they they want this type of functionality not that type of functionality well this is the stage where the management can make changes they are looking at a model and now they can make changes and in so doing, they feel they're better able to address the needs of the market. It can help to minimize uh, new product failures and to focus on the right projects. So taking this critical view as, as they move across through the various stages that the innovation has got to go through, they can fix the, the ones that are problematic and they can make provisions for the what if situations. What, what if uh, this happens? What will happen then? And they can factor this in. They, they can plan the delivery of the project. But they can also look at or imagine, because the product hasn't been made, they can imagine what the product will be like in the marketplace against existing products and against what they know that our competitors are currently working on, because the competitors will also be developing new products. So the likelihood of success can be gauged. It enables organizations to limit errors and duplication uh, in the use of resources. 
So setting out the the whole process, as I said, sequentially, starting with the idea, going right through to the final product, the final innovation, the final change, going right through from start to finish, then errors can be detected. Uh, a team of management looking at it will be able to spot or should be able to spot where errors can arise, where problems can arise, can anticipate the problems and can have contingency plans in place should it arise. So the whole process of development is more efficient because if the problem arises it's been anticipated. There's a contingency plan and that will fix the problem. But also in the use of the resources there's no waiting around or duplication. Certain machinery will be wanted, will be needed for a certain period of time only. Now if it's sequenced so that it arrives just in time, type of JIT type of thinking, if the, the project arrives just in time the machine will be idle, it can be used for that purpose and then the, the project can move on. In other words, they are optimizing the use of resources. It helps to show a clear developmental timeline. So there is clarity amongst the management, amongst the various stakeholders, uh, not just perhaps the, the senior or middle management, but perhaps even shop floor staff who will be tasked with delivering this particular project. So there's clarity. They, they know exactly what they've got to do. They know the timings, they know the resources that are necessary, they know the, the sequences, and they're going to deliver this innovative product. It sheds lights on, a light on the <clears throat> relative importance of stakeholders, and that's worth noting. Uh, some people will be affected a lot, some people won't be affected too much. So it's important to know who will be affected. Perhaps within a, a company, let's say a, a production company where we're making physical items, some departments might be affected quite considerably. Other departments may not. Now let's turn to the, the model itself and look across how this is set out. We start with the idea stage. This is the, the stage where nothing has happened, it's just an idea. Somebody within the organization or somebody involved has got an idea. An idea for a new product or a change to an existing product or some way of slimlining uh, the, the production process or improving efficiency within the organization or changing how it's marketed or how it's the product is distributed or if it's a service how uh, contacts with clients are made or what technology is used whatever it is it's an idea that's all it is it's just an idea in someone's head so that's where all products come from that's where all services come from everything starts as an idea everything is ultimately based in the psychology of somebody somebody had come up with the idea. So we start there and that's the first the first gate we hit. The gate one. The idea screen. Because when we have an idea it's important to talk to colleagues and to try and get some independent advice, some separate thinking, somebody else involved who will uh, criticize the idea and that's not meant to be an insult that's not meant to be personal that's meant to be constructive it's meant to refine the idea find the issues that are against it find the, the things that are not going to work why it's why this idea is not going to be so practical and and going to work so screen the idea, run it past 
lots of uh, colleagues run it through meetings and have meetings and discuss it just it's just an idea nothing has happened just merely thinking but it may be the case that there are significant criticisms at this stage so much so that the idea will die and people will move on oddly enough the originator of the idea may be personally upset about this and he or she may continue to believe it was a great idea but the fact is, if others can't see it or can't relate to it or don't support it, the chances are it's not such a great idea and it should be abandoned. So there is a little bit of personality issue associated here. The, the person who originated the idea will feel bad and will be upset and will need perhaps a, a little support from colleagues and a uh, little positive uh, set of comments to say, well, never mind, perhaps next time round, and so on. But it may also be the case that having run the idea across colleagues, it's a wonderful idea. And if it is a wonderful idea, and a lot of people can relate to it and think about it and say, yes, it's a good idea, and what's more, it can be refined in the following way, it could be improved in this way, or we could do this, or we... Now it's sparking off. A lot of positive comments and this idea is now worth carrying forward so it goes to stage one stage one is scoping it's trying to see what's involved what exactly is involved in this project in this proposed project um, has the business got the capacity to do it can it is it practical will it fit or is it an idea that is wonderful or sounds great but just can't be done because the resources are not available, the people are not available, the skills, the competencies, the capital, uh, the distribution, the marketing, the personnel, all the resources that are necessary just are not in place or, or they're just not available. They can't be afforded. Perhaps it's too expensive. So it's now moved from a great idea into one which the organization is looking at and say, can it go for? Is, is it something that can be done? Or is it just a great idea and it's a pity because we can't do it? And that's our second screen, our second gate. So if it goes through the second gate, then it's necessary to go to the, the second stage. And the second stage is build a business case. It's great to have an idea, but is it a commercial idea? Will it generate profits? Will it help to pay the bills? Will it pay for itself? Um, it could be a great idea, but it's just not marketable. Uh, customers would love to get their hands on it, but they're not willing to pay for it. It's just a great idea. But that's no good to the organization. The organization must pay wages and salaries and pay overheads. and So build a business case. Is it worth carrying forward this idea, this proposed innovation, whatever it is? And that stage, that's the, the third gate. Uh, it brings us to the third gate, I should say. And the third gate is go to development. So if it passes through everything up to now, in other words, if it's ticked off all stages, everyone says, it's yeah, we've got the resources, we've got the personnel, we've got the machinery, we've got the capacity, we've got the marketing resources, we've got everything in place. Build the business case. Is it worth doing? How much will it cost to make this thing? Um, how much can it be sold for? What are the what, what's the what's the net profit? Projected net profit per unit. Um, is it worth it? And if they say yes, then go to the development. 
uh, look for the now the nitty gritty. Look at, at the essentials. What precisely is required? This is not looking at the overall organization. This is now looking at what exactly is required to build this, uh, this idea. So look to the development. Which brings us to the fourth gate. Go to testing. So if it is now gone under into development, in other words, it's got through everything, it's up to the development stage. The next one is test it. So test it to see if it does what people believe it will do. Test it to see uh, if it works under different conditions. What are the downsides? What are its vulnerabilities? What are its weaknesses? Uh, modify the design, change it, make it more robust, make it more durable, make it uh, look better, improve its image. Whatever is needed, go through testing and validation. So here is, is the trial run. Uh, it could be a, a prototype that's been made. If it's a physical object, a prototype is made, now it's tested. Does it do what the company claims? If it's a service, you can also test it. Uh, it's the, the what if situations again. Uh, what if customers require the following? Will the system be able to interrogate and, and bring back instant results for from the database of whatever it is? Or so whatever the query is, if it if it's uh, a service, will will the system provide the answers? If it's a training program, will it deliver the skills and competencies that the training program claim? Um, if it's a sign, if it's sorry, if it's a, a service to customers such as accountancy or marketing or uh, personnel, or uh, if it's some sort of service sector um, delivery, does it deliver exactly what the company says? So it's been tested, and if it goes through that. Go to launch, launch the product. It's gone through all the stages. It was a, a good idea to start. The resources were found. A business case was, was designed and worked out and it seemed to pass that. Then go to the development, prototype it, develop something, test it, um, test uh, the delivery of this particular service or this product. And if everything works, launch it. Launch it as a service that the company now provides or launch it as a product that the company provide. And that is the stage fiat model. We'll come back and look at it again later. It's a linear process and consists of two main activities. So it's linear. If we step back for a second. You can see it is linear. It starts on the left and it finishes on the right. It's, it's a linear uh, situation. Now the two activities are stages. These are the activities involved in the process. Testing or building the business case or whatever. These are stages. And the gates. These are stop points. The gates are stop points for decision making. In other words, uh, there's an activity in the process. Um, something to do with Say, let's say prototyping, building the prototype and testing it. Having tested it, stop. Stop and evaluate. Evaluate whether it passed or whether there were issues or check it out. And add that to uh, the decision process. And this means it goes forward or it doesn't. So the gate is a stop point. It stops everything whilst the decision is made. So we have stages and gates. There are five stages in the stage gate model and each stage consists of the following. What is the project plan in each particular stage? 
and what works must be completed by the team. So it's an activity. There is an analysis. This is an analysis of the results from activities taking place across the project. So there's an activity. Activity is uh, building the business case. Having built the business case, that's the activity, there's a stop point, a gate. And in that gate, there's an analysis. And depending on the analysis, a decision is made. And the decision is made that it should go forward or it should stop. So, it, the stage gate model uh, is, is a very critical way of looking at the development of an idea. It can be stopped at any point. It gets to the, to the stop gate, it's analysed, it's scrutinised, it's checked. If it passes, it goes to the next stage. If, it, uh, if it's uh, scrutinised or looked at after the next stage is completed, it can again fail. So it can fail anywhere along the line. So here are the stages. Uh, we start with the idea stage and we work across. So the stages are one, two, three, four, and five, as we've got there. These are the stages and the stage one or the stage zero, the idea stage, is discover new business ideas and opportunities. It can be done through market research or focus groups or team working, training, mind mapping ideas. It can be done in a whole variety of ways. In fact, the idea stage can be derived from the thinking of one person who just happens to be perhaps a little more critical, a little more uh, circumspect about what's happening and comes up with an idea. We could classify that person as an entrepreneur. In this case, an internal entrepreneur someone within the organization who's coming up with an idea for the organization. So it's an internal entrepreneur. It's someone who's looking to uh, improve the organization, improve the company by coming up with a good idea. But the sources of that idea, as I said here, it can come from all sorts of places. It can come from market research, focus groups, and so on. But the idea can be within a focus group or within some market research that's been conducted or within some team working. But unless it's identified as an idea, it'll be missed. So we need somebody to identify it as a good idea. And as I said, we would normally classify that person as the internal entrepreneur. Stage one, scoping, an assessment of the market potential uh, or success of the idea, and also looking at the resources that are available within the organization to see uh, if, if it can be done. So it, scoping can be interpreted in different ways. It can be interpreted just as I've written it here, looking at the market and seeing what the scope for the product in the market is, or it could be the scope in terms of the resources it's going to use. Because if the company was to throw a lot of resources at it, it's forcing it onto the market. But that is not commercially a good idea. That could lead to significant losses. But there are tools that can help here. Um, a SWOT analysis or a PEST analysis may be useful. So. It's trying to look at uh, whether this is a good idea. What's the scope in the market? Is, is it a big market or a small market? How much are customers willing to pay for this? Uh, what is the resistance the customers may have to the idea? What, uh, what resources in comparison will the, the project take? Uh, is it simply a good idea? What's the scope for this thing? The business case is related to the first one. Uh, it involves producing documentation in favour uh, for the project or a proposal. 
Uh, all details of the project plan are discussed in the business case. I say in favour. That's assuming, of course, that the this project is going to go forward. Uh, it may be that the business case uh, is not held up. It's it's going to be too expensive to make it. So perhaps you'd want to look at stage two a little more critically and say, well, uh, yes, it, it could be in favour of developing it, but also, and equally, it could be against it because the resources necessary do not justify the project. Or it could be simply the, the final product, should it get that far, would be so expensive that customers would not pay for it. In which case, it is not commercial. Building the business case has to be extremely honest, extremely impartial. It has to honestly look at every aspect and as accurately as possible cost each part and look at the likely price of the product in the market at the end and do an assessment as to whether it is worthwhile. But information such as market research, costs, budgets, resources, human resources, manufacturing, production, marketing and launch of the final product, all of these things need to be taken into account. Uh, otherwise, as I said, it's, uh, it's going to be uh, really a guessing game as to whether this product is going to succeed or not. And if it does succeed in the market, is it going to generate the profits that the entrepreneur or the, the business managers uh, anticipated or would like to see? Stage three is the development. Plans are put into practice to produce the deliverables to uh, produce the idea, to bring the idea into existence. But they have to look at the product design and the operational plans and the development of prototypes. So it's necessary in the development stage to look at what is precisely required to build this product or uh, work out the stages in the delivery of this particular service including perhaps additional skilled personnel with particular qualifications in a certain area or uh, knowledge of the market. And if it's a physical product, looking at the design and the operational plans and um, the engineering plans perhaps that need to go into it and look at um, project management issues that are going to be important in the delivery of this product. So. A very sophisticated piece of work, not something to be undertaken very lightly. This is something which has to be thought out, carefully worked out and, and delivered. And it may take some time. Each one of these stages may take a considerable amount of time, in fact. And then we've got testing and validation. Testing the product to prove its validation. Uh, this incorporates the whole processes the product, the customer feedback, the market potential. Having built the product and got a prototype, it may be the case of uh, conducting focus group exercises, uh, inviting a random sample of the population, if there is such a thing as a random sample, but uh, inviting people uh, in from the outside potential customers and <clears throat> getting them to criticize and comment on the proposal and we have to appreciate at this stage this particular item may have cost the company a lot to get it to this stage so as we can imagine there must be a lot of fear on the management side at this stage that the um, the focus group will turn against the project will not like it if they don't like it it looks very bad for its commercial success. But at this stage, the resources have been committed. Time has been committed and resources to develop the project to this level. If everything goes well, go to launch. This is the commercialization of the product. 
it includes production, marketing, and product launch. It, it, it's everything. The, so we've gone from the idea to something on the market, a new service on the market, or a new product on the market. So we've gone through the stages. Uh, it's product development. It could be based on an existing product, in which case we would call it innovation. Uh, it's innovated the original product up to this level. And sometimes companies, for security reasons, will keep the original project, if they've got the capacity to do so, they'll keep the original one and run the new one in parallel. Just in case, just in case it fails, they've got the original one still in place. But that critically depends on whether they've got the production capacity or the personnel or um, they've got the facilities to do it. They may or may not be capable of doing that. So that was our tailgate model, the one we looked at earlier. And these are the gates. These are the stop points. This is where uh, at any stage in the process, the whole project can be stopped. And although there will be a lot of emotional uh, commitment to the project at any stage, if it is clear that it has failed one of these gates, then it should be stopped. It, perhaps it needs to go back to the original idea and revamp the original idea or change it around in some way and come back with an alternative. Now the gates, these are important processes within the model and serve as decision-making points. That's what a gate is. It's a decision-making point. Each gate represents a go-kill project. So it, it's the gate is go, carry on, do it, or stop it, end, no more. After review and analysis, should the project continue to the next stage? That's what the gate is asking. Should it be allowed to carry on or should it be killed off at that point? So the gate is a very strict set of ideas or principles that the company set in place. And if the project fails that set of criteria or fails one of these, these criteria, then it should be killed. It should stop at that stage and be fixed or killed off completely. Gates take into account the following. The, the quality of the project and the action plan. The business rationale, the project alignment with business goals. It looks at everything, in fact. The gates cover just about every aspect of producing this new product or this innovative product. It looks at everything uh, to see at what point it should cease or continue. There are five gates in the model. Each gate consists of the following activities and review. <clears throat> the gates, well, uh, a review of the actions and results of the previous stage. Documentation of outputs, uh, if deliverables are uh, in line with project objectives. So it's looking at, the gates are looking at deliverables. In other words, the outcomes. It's looking at the, are the outcomes what is expected of a project that's going forward? Or have the outcomes, have the deliverables failed in some way? Are they not up to expectation? If they're not up to expectations, they should be killed off. It looks at a, a set of criteria. It can't just look at the outcomes and say yes, no. It must compare those against some set of criteria. It must be judging them in some context. Uh, it could be judging them in the context of the resources available within the business or the skills and competencies of the workforce to deliver this new concept, idea, whatever it is, but it must have some sort of criteria. It must, uh, it can't just simply be a yes, no. It must be a no because and explain why it's a no. 
or yes because and explain why it's a yes. It can't just say yes or no. It must be a reasoned yes or no. And the output. Uh, should it move to the next stage or should it be discarded? That's the, the decision that must be made at each gate. It's better to kill off the project and save further development cost if clearly it's the case the project is not going to succeed. So once it's evident that the project is not going to succeed, it's killed off, it's stopped. But if there is sufficient confidence in the project that it could go forward and it could become a viable project, a commercial project, one generating profits, then output, uh, the output would be to continue. That would be the output from the gate. The gate is stop or go. That's all we're going to deal with here. So we've spent a long time looking at this particular topic. It's an important topic uh, because it gives us a framework for judging uh, innovative ideas or new product development. But as I said, that's all we need to do on this particular uh, topic. Please review the video a few times, go back over it, wind it forwards and backwards, and make your own notes as you go through it. In the meantime, thank you for watching.